welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk mm-hmm. about some of the fun things we found going on hello, hello. in Linux in the open source community as a whole. I'm Vin, that is Jill, and there is one Pedro Mateus together with hello, everyone yeah. at home watching this live after the fact or um, on Twitch, however you want to do it. We're glad you're here. So, man, we got a big chunky show. I promise we're going to talk about 3D effects because it's a great <laughs> thing to speculate about. And if you're old... Yes decrepit yeah. like I am You're like oh, I remember that I had one of those back in the day and it's going to be kind of brilliant but before we get into all that uh, we're going to play a little catch up and see what's going on what we got new because uh, Pedro's got new things that I didn't even notice and Jill was robbed and uh <laughs> 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 Jill's uh, disappearing uh, old computers are far more uh, noticeable. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> and over here, I have a. I got interested. We finally sold out um, 100%. I was uh, checking the. Uh, I'm horrible about keeping track of numbers. I don't. I keep track of terabytes these days for the um, downloads because we do all of our own hosting. And uh, But I was going through the stats and I said, wait. Why, why, why were people downloading uh, the show from Amazon? That doesn't make sense. Why? why mm, it's all that. So yeah, Yay! we're on Amazon Music, <laughs> which I immediately followed with a put up Linux Gamecast. Is that on there too? Mm-hmm. It is. So, I for whatever that's worth. Okay, you know who play Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays. Maybe you'll get something out of that from now on. And. Um, I found myself, as most pe- most sane, logical people do, at 3.30 this morning, compiling a Linux kernel because 5.14 RC4 was out, and they've released the real-time patch set, the preview ones for that, and uh, I wanted to play around with the audio stuff on Jackbox. And it's got some issues, but here's, here's my bit of information. Always check all of the patches that are submitted after since the last RC, because I immediately went down and went, oh, there's the MMAP issue. Exactly, and that's not in the RC4. So, RC5, mm, looking forward to it. And after Saturday, oh, Saturday was rough. It got warm in here Saturday, but the camera died three <laughs> times. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, I eventually just said, I'll clean up my audio and post and cut on the HVAC system. <laughs> oh, and it was barely stabilizing. And I was worried about Threat Booper. It was getting up there. So, I, I am genuinely thinking about throwing an AIO. Fred Booper. Not hmm. not terribly excited about that. That worries me. AI was worried. <laughs> water cooling worries me. I yeah. used to water cool all the things back in the day, but that was after a visit to the local marine shop. So mm-hmm. I I don't know. I'm still in that yeah because I'm going to end up with like RGB barf candy everywhere, and I, <laughs> people are going to have the wrong impression, Pedro, if they break into my house, come into this undistinct door with all this stuff and cut on everything. You're like, Ben stone. <laughs> oh, you're going to disappoint the, uh, the Robert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> are these the same that, people that uh, took everything from Jill's room? <laughs> yeah, there we go. They are, man. They, they thought like after hitting that RGB gold mine that they could come over here and then yeah. they're going to be surprised. <laughs> But yeah, out, outside of that, um, that's pretty much it. I've been, I, I've begun the process of talking myself into getting the uh, Black Magic Web Center HD, but that's going to take like two or three months of convincing me effectively. But we're underway. That'll be really cool for our live streams. And uh, speaking of that, that's one thing I'm excited about is because I won't need the computer to do a live stream so I can get kind of mobile with my setup. It's going to be awesome. Do that's stream. Right. Yeah, I can do streams from the closet, Pedro. Ooh, get even hotter. Yeah. <laughs> For when you really don't want that airflow. <laughs> what I'm saying is, you know, I finally broke down and um, bought it is when the live stream starts and it's like me and my welding vest going, <laughs> all right, let's do a thing. Um, <laughs> how about you, Jill? I mean, outside of getting uh, all of your stuff taken away. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, as you can see behind me, I've been working a lot on my computer room, getting it ready to with uh, for new carpet, new paint, new shelving, the works. So it's a it's a it's going to take quite a long time 
because <laughs> it took uh oh several months just to clear out several hundred computers <laughs> so <laughs> that is a thing <laughs> So that's why it's looking emptier behind me. Well, I mean, it's now that you got it cleared out, you're not going to put them back, don't worry. Hmm. <laughs> not in the way they were. It's going to be much, much uh, uh, tidier and uh, vertical. Okay. So I'll be using vertical space. So I'm not having to use my floor space as much. Do you think like <laughs> later on in life, um, you know, 20 years from now, because you know the people will get stuff stacked up into their house where there's only like a path. No, oh, no, that that's no. I'm orders. <laughs> yeah, but it's just like I'm too computer. OCD neat for that. <laughs> See, it would be interesting if you had that like teeny tiny little uh, <laughs> shimmy space, but everything was on, everything was running. It'd probably be pretty warm, but it'd be. Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, we found this Brian under a deck alpha. Um, yes. <laughs> It tilted. <laughs> it <trapped him. laughs> oh, Pedro, Mateus, what time is it? Well, let's see. Uh, over here in the UK, it's 2041 because, uh, yes, <laughs> I got me a, uh, a pine time. There you go. Yay. <laughs> Upside down, but yeah. The, it, it was, was the cheap. first to get it. it. <laughs> that was the thing. It was, <laughs> oh, it's the sealed one. And, uh. It's only like twenty six dollars. Okay, there you go. It's what pounds, but there you go. <laughs> what do you mean in the sealed one? Does it play like the Batman soundtrack when you get it? Or what? No, it, oh. as far as I can tell, it doesn't make noise. It just vibrates whenever you get a notification. If you have it synced up with your phone, it shows you all the notifications that you get, which is really nice. Uh, I was actually surprised when I got a notification and it vibrated a little bit, and I raised my wrist like, "Oh, oh, okay. That this is why people like this. Okay." Cool. <laughs> I'll give everyone a little bit of an insight in, into my brain worms. I would immediately take the watch band and set it down, just watch itself and send it notifications on the floor to see how far I could get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I might buy another one to race them. Aww. You'd think they would be the same. Yeah. No, I was actually surprised how solid it feels uh, because it's heavy. Again, $26. I was not expecting this to be quite as hefty as it is. So good job, Pine. Very good job. Then Yay, again, Pine 64. The Pine, yeah, the Pine, <laughs> uh, the Pine Book Pro was a very good ARM laptop. A little low end, but I mean, for that price. And the uh, the Pine Sill is a very good soldering iron, which is mm -hmm. basically the same price as the, uh, the Pine Time. So good job. Don't very get him confused. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. That could hurt. Don't get them swapped up. <laughs> You're just going to have some very confused solder. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, real quick, right at the beginning, I just want to give everyone a mention of this. And by the way, totes not an ad, but absolutely a head up. Uh, heads up even. System 76 is uh, launching, uh, what would you call it? A giveaway or a uh, it's one of those Twitter things. They man. are doing a giveaway, yes. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, they apparently had a $10,000 marketing budget for August and September, <laughs> and uh, this is how they decided to spend it. If you give them a retweet for this post, this will be in the show notes. If you're not already on Twitter, if you're not following System76, you can get an entry to win a Thelio major desktop worth up to $10,000. So yay, that's there. Uh, I just want mm -hmm. to give everyone a mention just in case, because you never know way back in the day. The only thing like this I've ever won was from AMD. Ironically enough, I, AMD had <laughs> oh. some, yeah, they enter your email, AMD sweepstakes. And I'd won a uh, Athlon X, like the baddest Athlon XP and a motherboard to go along with it from AMD that, cause I get this email and they're like, Hey, you need to fax this information to, it's like, what? Because this was like six months later. I'm like, oh, wow, I actually won a thing. <laughs> oh, that's um, awesome. That's kind of neat. I just wanted to give them a mention for that. You know, ultimately the goal is to get you in there and take a look at stuff while you're doing it, which which is fine. You really should because, you know, I mm -hmm. still think of, um, I, I have a bias against System 76. I think of being like wicked, super expensive. But, you know, Pedro and I, Pedro tried to 
like see how close to 10,000 he could get. I, I, I went down yes. the list. <laughs> that was like my limit. <laughs> First off, I was a little disappointed by not seeing any thread with pro options in there, but that's okay. It's okay. I built a workstation that I could use here at uh, LGC Actual. And I'm like, okay, I would legitimately use this. And I came out under $9,000 and that was for a 24 core. Um, the only thing that I had a jarring effect on was I think the 3070 was over a grand, but yeah, mm. <laughs> strange times. Jill's definitely going to be the one that wins it though. That'll be <laughs> Probably. Yeah, I really, I really want a Thelio, but I am definitely going to get a launch keyboard as well. So yeah, and a Thelio in the future. I, I, I know I am going to get one eventually. <laughs> we saw some gifts of that uh, empty in our Discord um, drop. Yeah, I was like, oh look at it. It's got rainbows, and I, I welcomed them to. <laughs> Club double space, which <laughs> takes a little getting used to having the yeah. split space bar. Looked well enough. Aww. All right. There you go. Free plug. But hey, go into the contest. You, you never know. Like, is it sometimes months later? You're like, wait a minute. What? I get a computer. It'll be a yeah. surprise for you. Aww. I, I so really don't want to pay tax if I end up winning, winning this. So <laughs> it's all on you. <laughs> 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 what are you gonna get like a GoFundMe to pay the VAT? <laughs> yeah, basically. Oh, it'd make me so happy because I'm a horrible <laughs> person. I'm a bad human being. Um, <laughs> that would be cool though if one of us won it. That would be so awesome. <laughs> Not really, because that really would make this look like an ad. <laughs> Ding. It's like, oh, collusion. Right. Okay, all right. <laughs> So let's get right into it. Um, KDE, and uh, I wanted to bring this up just because it kind of saddens me just like a little bit that uh, we're still struggling with high DPI in 2021. Yes, as it turns out, KDE has a ton of teeny tiny, pun intended, uh, elements uh, that all need to be made DPI aware, and they weren't. A lot of them now are. Uh, this week in KD, uh, as presented by, I uh, can't remember his name, uh, Nate. There we go. Um, it's uh, this one is very much focused on new bug fixes and performance improvements, which I, for one, fully support. As the one person who runs KD all the time around these parts, I, uh, yeah. No fixes on the KWIN compositing. There were a bunch of other KWIN fixes, which are welcome, very much so. But the uh, no, uh, the compositor is still uh, trash. The <laughs> uh, ISO, the the one bug that's been annoying me is that ISOs are still seen as three D models by whatever mime type thing Dolphin, um, the uh, file yeah. manager, is uh, <laughs> looking at, and I've remove uh, all of the mime type associations and let it regenerate the cache and it keeps coming back mm -hmm. so that needs fixing and uh yeah the uh, one of the bugs that i had noticed is sometimes you're moving a big file or a bunch of uh, little files and you want to keep the uh notification box open so you pin the thing and then you'd open another dolphin window and it would close but they're fixing that apparently they're aware of that now so if you um actually pin one of the notifications on screen it will stay on screen and not scurry itself away the moment you do literally anything else so that's good <laughs> hey Pedro, just, just calm, down, calm down calm <laughs> down we, we gotta learn about paper cuts yeah so <laughs> yeah as Pedro was just talking about lots of paper cuts have been fixed and one of them is the uh, system tray highlight li line is now at the top of the panel for the selected applet instead of in the middle <laughs> That always it used to like drive me up the off. wall. <laughs> yeah, I, it, Honestly, it used to... I didn't mind that. <laughs> oh, okay. It drove me up the wall because it wasn't at the top. <laughs> Everyone's all upset about like these little tiny itsy. They've addressed the real the real problem. The system tray highlight line for the active applet now touches the edge <laughs> of the panel. So, all right. Fixing the real yeah. problems. Yeah, that, that, that's what yeah. Jill was bringing up. I was like, I don't, I, I don't get it. I don't. Because, yeah, it was like two pixels off of the top of the pedal. I, that's fine. I, just, yeah. I'm glad it was fixed. <laughs> I think Pedro is trying to say, as long as the windows are in the right place, A. Yeah. As long as they show up when I click on the thing, 
You're doing good, Katie. Just fix the compositing. In all seriousness, uh, fix it on everyone's machine. But Pedro's, but keep up the excellent work, everyone involved in the KDE project. Now, <laughs> awesome. speaking of we things that <laughs> kind of work. Yeah, so this is exciting. So Pulse Audio 15.0 has been released, and it has lots of new features. Actually, a lot, including an improved Bluetooth, uh, in- improved Bluetooth support. For the LDAC and Aptix Bluetooth Codex for the Advanced Audio Distribution Profile. And support for the high-quality SBC XQ configuration variants, which I have dealt with. So <laughs> I was happy to see that that is it's going to be included. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so... And there's also lots of ha- hardware support, including for the Steel Series. Arctis 9 USB gaming headset. Yes, I actually have this headset and I've even used it here on the show before. And uh, it had one of the rare sound chips that wasn't supported on on Linux until now. Although it would kind of I was able to get it to work, but it had issues. So um, now I can use that headset more for LWW. <laughs> it's just great. So uh, I was happy about that. And and there's support for the Sennheiser 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 GSX 1000 and 1200 Pro USB DACs for gaming. Great, gaming <laughs> the DACs. more the merrier. Yes, <laughs> I know okay. it's, a, it's a foreign concept. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, but yeah, the uh, thing that I noticed was it no longer depends on X modules to work in Wayland. I can I can make that up if I try it. Uh, one good thing is that uh, it auto loads the Jack modules the moment you start uh, the Jack server. It goes, oh, you're using Jack. There you go. Mm-hmm. So that that's good. And uh, you can have your also configs uh, running from your home. So if you yeah. are sharing your machine with more than one person, you have multiple users. It, you're not all automatically inheriting the same settings. You can have your kids destroying their ears by having their uh, headset cranked all the way up while you, uh, well, you probably already destroyed your ears, so you can have it cranked up all the way. It's fine. Probably okay. That's not an issue. (laughs) Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, Uh, Audio doesn't work on Linux. That's why audio doesn't work on Linux. Um, visual gag had to be done my apologies uh yeah that's cool uh it, it's good to see this stuff getting thrown into pulse audio because uh mm-hmm. until pipe wire gets completely sorted this is what you got to work with and um the more work gets done on it uh the better so and this will actually very much help pipe wire because if you've started exactly um, fedora <laughs> recently you've probably gone oh let's try qjack oh it's already running why is it already? Yeah. Uh, the pipe wire. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And that has nothing to do with Pulse Audio, but. I mean, if, if you are going to use Jack for something and you want to route Pulse Audio through it, yeah. <laughs> or it through Pulse Audio, whatever the case may be. <laughs> you don't have to do Pulse Audio. Okay. Just to save people confusion, you don't have to do virtual Pulse Audio <laughs> syncs with pipe wire. That's kind of the whole point. Mm-hmm. So. GitHub, open source developers, legal offers, offers, <laughs> offers open source developers, legal counsel to combat DMCA abuse. I had a good laugh at this because <laughs> mm-hmm. was it was like a year or two years ago. Google, more importantly, YouTube did the same thing because it told all the developer, not developers, but creators, hey, if you get fault strike. We'll help you out with legal counsel and all that. Then like Sterling got into it again and YouTube's like, why do we even mean that, man? Mm-hmm. So <laughs> I'm kind of, kind of worried. I, I, well, I'm not worried. I'm just saying maybe not get, don't get your hopes up too much for this. Yeah. Uh, hashtag where's the fair use too. Uh, but the, yeah. GitHub are at least uh, providing the lip service to say that, yes, if you get hit with a spurious uh, DMCA claim, oh, like, I don't know, YouTube DL, RE3, those were the two prominent projects that Mm -hmm. I was uh, aware of. And yeah, those were very much taken down spuriously. Uh, RE3 more so than YouTube DL because YouTube DL had two unit tests in the readme 
uh, that uh, linked to uh, copyrighted work. So that was the only th two things out of the whole project that they could use and they abused the DMCA system to take it down. RE3, on the other hand, had nothing. There was nothing that 2K could have mm -hmm. grabbed on to take it down and they still did. And it was down for, what, three months? That's, that's bad. So people took notice, obviously, and people were saying, oh yeah, GitHub is just becoming as bad as YouTube now. Yeah. And so, yeah, th this to me just sounds like lip service because, oh yeah, we'll totally offer you some uh, legal thing. Time to save face. You can say because, it like that. Uh, I mean, there's no face to save. They have to do that in, as to the letter of the law in order to maintain the safe harbor. It, it's not like they have they options. Have right. <laughs> but uh, shouldn't the MCA claims at least have, oh, I don't know, an, an actual valid copyright but claim what, to them? What you're missing <laughs> here is they're not the ones who decide that. <laughs> GitHub has no say so it's like well that one doesn't look valid we're not going to enforce it no they have to put it down and then the two parties have to take care of it yeah the the MCA system is broken <laughs> this we agree <laughs> you needed more evidence yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know this was just on the heels of the YouTube uh, DL fiasco so I'm I'm so happy that I got resolved and yeah even uh um, Ultimore Sandman in chat was saying, you know, look who, who owns GitHub. Yeah, Get, GitHub and Microsoft, but they're actually doing a good thing this time. So, and uh, it's actually kind of huge because one of the, this is one of the largest projects in the world to support open source developers with legal counsel. The, this is really, really big, actually. I, I think it's going to help a lot of projects because they don't have the money to hire lawyers. Really awesome. It'll probably end up being lip service, but hey, man, it's good PR one way or the other. And we're talking about it. And uh, like, you know, especially things like what was the uh, Rockstar nuke, the uh, reverse engineering for the GTA? RE3. Yeah, RE3, like Pedro was saying. And uh, for no mm -hmm. reason, none other than like, ha ha, we can. And I'm sure that's all that was behind it. They're, they're, yeah, it's like we can abuse this system mm -hmm. to take down something we don't like. We are just going to cause you like issues and pain in your life because we can we're rock stone mm -hmm. hi uh yeah so who's got a libram story oh. <laughs> <laughs> someone in our discord does <laughs> yeah it's not just our discord every time i bring that up and i see somebody's talking about a libram usually a phone um there's the yeah i'm still waiting on mine or <laughs> yeah yeah it's like i was one of the original backers and i still don't have mine yeah. i ran across that i don't <laughs> want to get too much into this because this is all like one-sided but something that did happen is um what was a dang flabbity posted but there on, was a thread <laughs> yeah posted you know just like hey man read before ordering and there were some issues but well, there's like the web archive let's let's take a look at this let's not completely gloss over it uh that'd been nice if it had loaded man um yeah it's a web archive you can't just uh go directly there through the url you have to actually load it up properly so first yeah. off, first of <laughs> all i, I want to say this uh this person ordered a two thousand dollar mobile phone i don't i'm just gonna say prop me I don't care. I'm not spending. Would you ever spend two thousand dollars on a mobile? I wouldn't even spend five hundred dollars, let alone two thousand. <laughs> okay. So, okay, learn more about the Room Five, and I think this was all confusion with the ship date. Pedro, fill some time for me while I pull up the original uh, form thread. Yeah, it, it was basically uh, the person who was looking at it uh, was okay. All right, I paid the money and now I want to actually get my phone. So when he got the first one, it's like, oh, six to eight weeks. And then um, a bunch of time um, went by and then, oh, uh, it's been two months now. So those eight weeks are already gone. So he asked again, when is it coming? Oh, it might come in October this year. <laughs> That, that, that's a bit more than eight weeks. <laughs> that's a little bit more than eight weeks. <laughs> so, yeah, for when you're spending that kind of money on something, yeah. I think at that point, uh, 
the fine people at uh, Pine have uh, eaten their lunch because <laughs> they've put out the Pine phone, the Pine tab, the Pine book pro, the Pine everything else. And uh, these these phones. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I know. And this was this campaign was four years ago. I mean, that's people have been waiting four years for their two thousand dollar phone <laughs> that may not get to them. <laughs> One of his oh. biggest issues and was uh, he went to ask for was it a refund issue because uh, shipping time from twenty twenty four weeks approximately stopped luring new purchasers and then they really they're not going to get the purchase. Uh declining a refund. Mm-hmm. So after, because it was against their policy to yeah. provide yeah. refunds. Now <laughs> really. <laughs> here's the thing all of this yeah. make up your own mind with this I'm not throwing anybody under the bus I just thought yeah. let me tell you the reason why I put this in the show notes because <laughs> I saw this this book showed up on our Linux and our bureaus and I'm like ah, alright and I went to click on it and the thread was gone went into the comments to read about it and what had happened is they didn't delete the thread they just marked it to private so you had to be logged into purism in order to See it. You couldn't just see the previously public web facing thread. And that's never worked out. This is just my little little, little help for any PR person. That Yeah, the stress end effect, it's real. <laughs> yeah. That has genuinely never worked out well in the history of ever because when you do something like that, there's no other way to take it than as an admission of guilt. Like, oh, we've done something wrong. We need to cover it up, even though maybe you're not. That's the optics. That's the optics. And that's one of the reasons I'm covering this right now. Jill's talking about it right now. Pedro's talking about it right now. And they're talking about it in mm-hmm. chat because you did that as it just left it alone. And be like, oh, all right. Somebody's upset about a refund. One even mentioned it. Yeah, no, it, it, it would have literally cost you, yeah, what, $2,000? <laughs> it's nothing compared to the bad publicity that you're getting now. <laughs> well, it was fun reading the thread, which I wouldn't have went through if I didn't have to go to the web archive to get a hold of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, people, were, mm-hmm. A couple of people were talking about just asking for refunds and some people came in like, hey man, I did get a refund. But then people were denied refunds for whatever reason. But what I saw was like, then next the week after that, I got an email asking if I wanted to invest. <laughs> yeah, and spend more money, pay more money. <laughs> pay more money for what? <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't know. I've just kind of steered clear of um even with my pine phones and i just I, at your own risk with everything pine does they, they oh seem, yeah pine phones they they were mistakenly shipped to new zealand yeah if you ordered one of one of the ones in this batch mm-hmm. double check it no or triple check it that, <laughs> okay it, it it's been <laughs> fortified it, it's good <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> The uh, the NSA knows absolutely nothing about your phone. <laughs> Aw. Well, I just hope, you know, because the Purism f- Librem phones have been well-received for people who got them. So I'm I'm hoping that, you know, people get theirs in October and they're good units and it'll, you know, people will be happy spending two grand and waiting four years but i i really want them to succeed because because we need more linux phones in the ecosystem (laughs) it was just earlier this week even in our discord i brought this up i'm like oh look they've done a dumb that's not bright to hide a thread and i mean was it katana um it was either katana or Darkwing, maybe Might have been dark- I, I don't know. It was Immediately <laughs> popped up and said, "Yeah, I'm still waiting on my one for four years ago." Like, yes, yeah, the original yeah. Kickstarter or Indiegogo uh, funding campaign. Yeah. <sighs> okay. <laughs> now we get to tackle this because something um, happy. <laughs> <laughs> speaking of more speculation, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, 3D Effects Interactive. Twenty years later, the wait is finally over. Our team will discuss new hardware, goals for the next twelve months, and many exciting announcements this Thursday. Hashtag 3D Effects. <laughs> that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is what we were treated to. Um, Friday morning, well, Friday afternoon or Saturday morning, however you want to look at it. And um, it's from a new account at 3D Effects Official. And they posted something that can only be described as an eptic, eptic, yeah, eptileptic. 
troll. Um, <laughs> clever marketing, possibly a bold claim. Now, I don't expect anything from this announcement, but come on. You want to speculate? It's like buying a lottery so ticket cool. and going, ooh, what, what could possibly happen? And um, here's the thing. I, I, I've been tracking this. I had some theories. My theories have changed up a little bit because 13 hours ago, they posted an update, a statement on the return of 3D effects. And this is a very, very pixelated picture. I mean, it looks like it's from... 1998. <laughs> uh, Jensen Products. Is that a play on Jensen? I wonder. Um, proud to announce that 3D effects is returning after 20 years. Uh, our partner, da 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 da. Uh, 3D effects is scheduled to return this winter with new graphics cards and will expand into other products relating to smartphones, smart TVs, and sound systems to where some smart knucklehead had to write. Beats by 3D effects. <laughs> um, yeah. Where are we at, everyone? Jill, what do you think? Yeah, so I I think this is really cool. I mean, you know, it'd be nice to have another uh, competitor and uh, a classic gaming one at that back in the market. Yeah, this may be legit. I mean, there was a, a real board built. So <laughs> that's something. <laughs> and, you know, I... I still use and love my Voodoo 1 and 2 in my old machines. I know uh, Ven has a Voodoo 1 that he used to use, and I'm sure Pedro had one back in the day. And nope. in I fact, think there's the Voodoo's and Jill, went straight Jill, to the Rivas. Jill, <laughs> this young boy was... He, oh, yeah. and, uh, he's a little too young. Okay, yeah. <laughs> the Riva TNT 2. <laughs> well, I have something from my collection that I can show. Hey, show and tell. Here's yes. one. <laughs> New in box. <laughs> uh, did Ben get something out too? <laughs> I think now Ben has to go and get his thing for show and tell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I did use this at one time in my uh, computer, but it's still like brand new. I, I didn't use it for very long. And uh, 3D yeah. gaming at 60 FPS. That's some <laughs> bold claims. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look at that beautiful card there we go uh, jill your box only has one gpu on it <laughs> <laughs> yeah i have uh i think my, my two has G two gpus this is this is the the first AGP version. <laughs> uh, yeah, the uh, AGP started with Voodoo 3s, the uh, Voodoo 4s. Uh, they were all AGP. But um, yeah, starting with the Voodoo 5 5500, they went to the dual GPUs. Yeah. And uh, then there's the ever most difficult to find, the Voodoo 6000, which was never officially released, but they made about a thousand of them. And they are still floating around. Um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, when it comes to this, I want to believe it's fun. Again, I, for me, it is like the once or twice every decade that I buy a lottery ticket where you get to spend two or three days going, oh, I wonder what could be possible. And yeah, I, I don't have any faith in this. Also, I really, really want to point this out to the person behind this. <laughs> be careful. It's funny mm -hmm. now. It's cute mm -hmm. now, but be very aware that you are getting the hopes up of people who I personally yeah. <laughs> wouldn't want to be on the bad side of. I'm that is not That's a closet hype train. Us. That is genuine concern <laughs> yeah. for you. I mean, <laughs> just be prepared. When I say take care mm -hmm. of yourself, is what I'm saying. Um, yeah. I, yeah, I, I do want more competition. I do, but I don't think that a boutique GPU from 20 years ago, if it's going to be that uh, four or five GPU one that um, was uh, floating around a few months back, mm -hmm. I, I don't think that that's <laughs> the best thing right now, to be fair, because Why? people just want something that works fair, but they want something that works. Nostalgia, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> well, they do work and, on Linux, so. <laughs> yeah, they did. Um, yeah. Now, 
I was talking on Saturday's show when I first heard that initial announcement with no further information. I immediately was thinking, it's this guy, the Voodoo 5 mm-hmm. 6000, which is mm-hmm. being made. Boxes are being made for this. This thing is, and it's going to be PCI instead of AGP, so you can use it on your retro gaming station, but we don't have a ship date for that. Um, and the cool thing about that is you can still buy the uh, what they were using for GPUs. You don't have to uh, cannibalize existing cards. So like no uh, junk cards. I'm sorry. Like this thing. <laughs> no food is more harmed than the this making thing of this one. <laughs> bounces around in a drawer with spare parts. That That's it. Aww. It is. <clears throat> <laughs> Uh, My favorite ones were the ones where, you know, you pinwheel them through your uh, 2D GPU. That, yeah, the that, original. Those were the days. Yeah, the original. The, uh, Voodoo 1 3D. and Voodoo 2. <laughs> and Voodoo 2s had SLI. I had a flatmate that had two Voodoo 2s. Mm. Which, like, that that's neat. I went and bought a Voodoo 3. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a PCI version, Ben? As well, the the PCI GPU? They did come out with several of them, but they're they're rare. They're hard to get a hold uh, of. The original Voodoo's, uh, the Voodoo 1 and Voodoo 2's were all PCI. Yeah, yeah. But the I mean Voodoo when... The Voodoo 3 series yeah. were the AGPs. Yeah. Well, they actually did make Voodoo 3's that were PCI as well. I'm sure they did. <laughs> that? And, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I got nothing more. <laughs> Again, I jumped the Voodoo things and <laughs> we, I went straight to the Riva yeah. TNT's, so... <laughs> Uh. <laughs> All right. That works for me. I'm down with that. Uh, let's talk a little bit about our favorite company. Oh, Microsoft. Okay, this one is very huh. much skirting the whole Linux thing. <laughs> you can this run, is good you news. can run this in Linux, Pedro. You can. I think that is very much where Microsoft are going with this one because Windows 365 Cloud PC service will range anywhere from 20 bucks to $162 Per month, per user. That, yeah. So uh, the different pricing tiers basically give you different uh, storage, uh, processor, amount of cores, RAM. No word on GPUs just yet, but I have a sneaking suspicion that that may very well make its way there. Uh, But yeah, it is uh, Windows uh, on a license that you have to pay per month like you would with... um, Office 365 nowadays, hence the name. Uh, And yeah, it is just your own desktop PC that you can stream from the cloud. We all know what the cloud is. This is Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays after all. Yeah, so does Linux. (laughs) Yes. And uh, Microsoft. Microsoft runs their Linux on their cloud. Azure is very much running on Linux, and they have at least two Linux distros, one for prototyping and one for networking. So... Yeah, that 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 is very much a thing, and uh, something tells me that uh, some uh, the powers that be at work may find this cheaper than uh, having to order a bunch of laptops and a bunch of uh, enterprise Windows licenses. Yeah, <laughs> I'll go ahead and break this down too, because Microsoft didn't acquire Beam because they wanted to get into streaming. You might remember Beam; they named it Mixer after a minute, you know, just in case you, you didn't pick up by how quickly they nuked that project from orbit. The plan was never to keep it around to try to make it a real thing. No, they just mm-hmm. wanted the tech. Because I've said it before on this show, and I'll say it again: if you can stream games, stream in a desktop. Man, that's easy. That's easy, sauce. That's easy. Most of it's static, yeah. <laughs> yeah, doing spreadsheets. <laughs> the other <laughs> Photoshop. Are you kidding me? Not only can we do it with super low latency, we can make it look great because, again, it's easy. Moral of the story for everyone on Enterprise with a company provided um, laptops. Y'all getting Chromebooks in the future. I hate to break that to you. Um, <laughs> now, Jill, I was... Yeah. Never excited for a second to run out and join the beta and try it out and like, oh, this will be so awesome. But morbid curiosity got the best of it. Like, you know what? I'm going to go try it out. And like, no, don't. Because <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> they paused the free <laughs> trial and I'm so sad. I yeah. I'd have to give them $20 a month for a remote Windows VM that I don't have any use for. <laughs> yeah. Ouch. Yeah, that's that is one of the biggest problems. The the entry level one is twenty and that cloud machine isn't powerful enough, honestly, to really run Adobe products if you wanted to. <laughs> so 
But, you know, we've been talking Wait a about you here. You mean to tell me I can't run my Adobe PDF reader? Yeah, <laughs> yes, yes. But not After Effects and Photoshop and Premiere. That might be a little difficult. <laughs> but you know what? Remember Ven and and uh, Pedro? We had predicted here on LWW back in 2018. The big story here is Jill almost forgot Windows. Forgot Pedro. You're being too quiet. No. Almost forgot my name too. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, my space. Sorry. <laughs> but we had predicted this back in 2018 here on LWW that Windows was moving to what we were calling a software as a service program, but it's it's known now as a desktop as a service program. <laughs> Windows has been moving towards um, software as a service um, ever. For a while. <laughs> Nadella mm-hmm. walked in from Balmer because they want to be, they yeah. want to do the transformation. They want to do what IBM did, you know? Get that money, get that yeah. money. We don't want to deal with the software side. We just want to license stuff out and not they have still to want to make software else. the first hint was going from like microsoft everything linux is cancelled on that to hey we want our software to run everything so <laughs> you know what yeah. if this comes up at a pinch i don't have a problem with it i want this mythical thing because i run into this all the time and it's such a small market of um with these audio interfaces that i have that you know, only have drivers for like Windows XP or something like that. I want some mythical piece of like VM that I don't have to keep on my system or anything like that, but it can like tie into my hardware so I can just spool up an XP instance to change one setting in these cursed things that I need for two seconds and power it back down. Make that for me, Mike. I'll give you 20 bucks for that once. Yeah. Well, honestly, I think uh, this could lead to... Adoption on Linux. Go ahead, Jill. It, yeah. So I really, I I really feel that it could lead to adoption on Linux because now you can run all your Microsoft apps in a web browser on Linux easily without having to spin up a VM and do all that. So there are some advantages to this. It might run slow, but it's it's going to be there to run Linux apps uh, to run uh, Windows apps on Linux. I don't think it's necessarily <laughs> going to run slow. Like I said, if you can deliver <laughs> games. Delivering a desktop? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Ren- rendering might be something different, but. Well, for you. <laughs> that's all running remotely, too. Yeah, they're just in the yeah. video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to do anything. Locally. At most, you're going to need the download speed in order to download the final file or the upload speed to upload whatever you're working on. Well, but yeah, no. Case uh, for the local VM is just how much do you trust whatever USB protocol they have going on to for sending your inputs? To the cloud, especially a Windows cloud. <laughs> I mean, just as much as I would yeah. trust uh, whoever it was that set up the uh, VPN for the company. <laughs> whatever policies he came if, up with. Yeah. <laughs> if you're going to, ho- well, everyone's hosting it on Azure nowadays too, which is the scary side. <laughs> but look at this. Here's the bright side of this. I'm not defending. I'm just saying as just a general architectural idea, uh, the ability to nuke and pave instantaneously. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Just restore the snapshot from before they mm-hmm. done goofed. Right. Done. <laughs> so who knows? Who knows? Maybe one day we'll just have that <laughs> Microsoft it's been reduced to a web browser. I love it. It does make me happy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there is. But running Linux. video. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, De Kresny was saying there's a big difference between office workloads and my professional workloads. True. I'll you go know. ahead and right. just look at what put this out there. <laughs> Production studios I've talked to, they're doing 3D animation, like heavy stuff working remotely. They're doing it through the stack. Yes, yes. But my point was that the computers, uh, it, it only had two gigs of RAM. The oh, one, the, not... the base $20 model is what I'm talking about. The low, yeah, you know, I wouldn't the be using this one. for that. <laughs> that. That's what I was, uh, yeah. <laughs> you have to pay, you know, several hundred dollars to get the better computer uh, streamed. <laughs> Probably still cheaper, considering the price yeah. of a Windows license per seat and the price of a laptop yeah. per person. Yeah, probably still cheaper. Well, it's also like weird things, um, like you run into, like, especially when it comes to, like, if I need to spool up Amazon stuff real quick, that's a lot cheaper than me having the hardware on premise and maintaining it mm-hmm. and storing it, like, for the few times I need it. And so, who knows? Let's just all sit back and watch and see what happens. 
Until Mm -hmm. then, I want to thank everyone making the show possible. Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast, each and every one of you, helping us do what we do four or five days a week. Not just this show. We do a show on Saturday, and we break out special streams on Tuesday. Wednesday is the really special one because we're here right now, right? Um, Mm -hmm. Jordan Mm -hmm. does something on Thursday. No one's sure, but show up. It's amazing. And Friday, I'm back. You can come hang out with old man Vin doing kind of fun stuff. And Saturday, we do the longest running, the largest Linux gaming podcast. And hey, it's always fun when we get to do that, especially when Linux gets popular every now and then, like it's doing, it comes in waves. Mm -hmm. And we get the people that, you know, the fair weather Linux fans that show up like we have, (laughs) like we're seeing people that we haven't seen in our audience since Steam Machines were announced. They're like, hey, Linux is awesome, you guys. (laughs) You remember me? I'm like, "Uh, sure. (laughs) Um, but thanks for showing up. Thanks for supporting what we do. We don't have commercials or anything like that. If you like what we got as a patron, you get the live uncut series of everything. So if you need four hours, two hours, whatever in podcast format to listen to in background noise, it's pretty decent access to our discord. You also get access to our discord through uh, being a Twitch sub, but we do have IRC Twitch and discord tied together for live shows. No charge. We'd love to have you in and saying some things, leave some comments, hints, allegations, and, um, yeah, just keep being awesome. It is kind of brilliant. But you might have noticed, mm-hmm. Peter's getting a little antsy. Uh, we, we do have wish zones <laughs> because we effectively run this as non for profit. So we're not, if you haven't noticed, we're not rolling in cash. So we got like a little thing like if you want to pick us up something, that's fine. If you get something for the studio, that's how these fiscally irresponsible people end up like, and I will publicly shame them. But if you get something for Pedro or Jill, they still have to follow mm-hmm. the rules that I set yes. in motion years and years ago <laughs> is you could make them say whatever you want. And yep. this is probably going to please me because this came from Linux Nero, who is uh, actually <laughs> back here. Uh, I think, are you? Yes. <laughs> yep. Above all this. There he is. Yes. Right there. <laughs> yeah, no, Linux Nero did pick up this very, very sturdy uh, microphone arm. It is a uh, chonky boy compared to the previous one that I had. Uh, and I do have to read the note, uh, so have Nori throw a cream pie in your face on LGC or LDWD <laughs> from John Wiggins. So LGC it is because I don't know what the other one is. Uh, so yes, Linux Nero, I did uh, <laughs> pass your uh, request uh, to Nori and um, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I can't, you know, she's not contra- uh, contractually bound like we are to read this. So uh, that 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 will be up to her, but she's aware. I've passed Aww. on the note. Thank you very much. <laughs> I, I've been authorized to speak on behalf of Linux Nero in lieu of a cream pie. A brick will also work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Probably less to clean up after. Well, except for the blood, but eh. yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you've got something other than the. Uh, danger arm with the external springs so i had to swap the springs on the other one too because it was drooping because uh thank you uh very much mysterious person uh that's right below linux uh, <laughs> who uh decided you know what you you need a decent microphone so thank you thank you very much i'm but yeah it, it, it's a bit heavy <laughs> well i mean you got like big chunky heavy mics like this this <laughs> mic is super heavy thank you arthur and actually arthur got this one i'll tell you here's a pro tip for anybody and i main, main reason i'm going to bring this up because this one was a little scratchy and uh i'd taken a couple of these apart because radio stations throw them out all the time and i'm that guy if i'm doing morning shows i'm like all right where's the spare parts give me and um mm-hmm. So it's like, hmm, maybe I'll just put a little, I, I squirted some uh, Teflon in there. And I permanently made this one. So like the right where you would want it, like the mic in front of you, it drops down a little bit forevermore. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm always like leaning down because I can't, if I put it right here, it goes eh, right here. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my own fault and I'm not taking it apart to fix it I've just learned to live with it thank you Linux Nuru uh, you are very very much appreciated it's uh, Yay, no, this love one you, I Nuru. put the microphone mm-hmm. on it and it does not droop at all thank you <laughs> with love from System76 yeah <laughs> <laughs> wasn't signed System76 so. <laughs> System76 and Pedro Brick <laughs> We'll call it Smash OS. I am. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Let's get into this. A slice of pie. Aw, birthday pie. I know. You Has know, four candles. <laughs> that's how you know to start running, man. Somebody shows up with sliced pumpkin pies with four <laughs> candles in it and get out of that room at all cost. I'm just saying. Santa pie. Aww. Yeah, this is awesome. So, yeah, the default Raspberry Pi OS kernel now includes SATA support. Yay, out of the box. And so now you don't have to recompile your kernel to get it to work. And it's really cool because the Raspberry Pi OS has built-in support for almost all PCI Express SATA adapters. And all you have to do is run sudo apt-get upgrade and you'll have it. Amaze balls. <laughs> This is actually really cool. Language. <laughs> <laughs> now you're going to get bleeped. So this does require, you know, um, a SATA card, which is going to eat up your PCIe by one hole. And boo to that because mm -hmm. I was reserving that for my RME card that I was going to make a uh, Pi powered compute module jackpot. It's just like a weird thing that, you know, if I left it alone, I could probably hear it whispering like, kill me. But I thought it'd be a fun project. Uh, Pedro, are you excited? Uh, do you plan on getting all SATA pied? That uh, for me, no, I already have an ass, but uh, if you are looking to. It's like senpai, <laughs> but with more SATA. Yeah. <laughs> oh, SATA pi song. Uh, the. <laughs> Uh, if you really want to get your own like uh, DIY style NAS going with a Raspberry Pi, you know, for the efficiencies, uh, this is amazing because you get uh, four um, SATA slots with the buy one card and you're, you already have the um, USBs and the micro SD card slot off of the um, the baseboard for the compute module for it, because this one is actually using the compute module um, and the baseboard and then an, an added... Uh, come on, I know how to speak English. <laughs> an add-on card. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and yeah, you can just set up your own NAS very, very quickly and you don't even have to worry about installing the uh, SATA everything uh, on Raspberry Pi OS or whatever um well this one is specifically for raspberry pi os because it comes there out of the box yay <laughs> i mean yeah took a while how long has the raspberry pi been out two weeks, <laughs> two weeks. <laughs> Did they yeah it is recently? nice pedro listen i learned a long time ago people just want prompt answers not necessarily correct ones oh <laughs> Well, yeah, like Pedro uh, was saying, who it's, works in IT it's, support, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's nice because you don't have to hook up the SATA drive in the traditional way on the Raspberry Pi via the USB ports, so which actually makes it slower. So this way, you get the full speed of your SATA SSD. Don't listen to a Raspberry Pi. Your USB <laughs> M.2 drive just fine. <laughs> <laughs> You're still special. Yeah. You're a good buy. Yeah. I'm trying to make my Raspberry Pi feel shame, Jill. Boom. Aww. <laughs> my Raspberry Pi is in a fake Game Boy case. So. Mine's running a stream There deck, is no shame. So, yeah. <laughs> Mine's like, really? <laughs> Quad core, eight gigs of RAM. What do you got me doing? You, you run a stream deck about a robot. Oh, oh You run a web server. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so if you want to tell us about your Pi Powered Adventures, uh, SATA, or just the challenges that you have personally run into conquering the English language. Yeah. You can do that. <laughs> <laughs> you can absolutely do that by all means put me to shame because uh boy do i screw up the uh, queen's language repeatedly but linuxgamecast.com you hit the contact button you're given a form with a, a few caveats on top you may or may not want to read but if you don't read them and your thing doesn't come through to us that's on you uh so pick lwdw and uh, we'll feature your feedback right here right now Unless we can Google it and we uh, find the answer on the first page. Mm -hmm. That's on YouTube. <laughs> That's really simple. Or unless I have to like copy pasta a YouTube comment and put it in our Discord like I did this morning. Like, anybody want to take a crack at deciphering this? <laughs> yeah, no, that was unnecessarily filled with 
everything. <laughs> I think Pedro's on the right track is all I can say. Like going through what Pedro That's the only wrote, thing that made sense. It's like looking at it and like, I think that's what it's trying to be. And it, that was the edited version. Flying Spaghetti Monster help us if we could see the original. <laughs> It was probably just missing a comma. <laughs> oh, right, right. That's pretty well the situation. <laughs> so, uh, one thing I've been doing, when time allows, because it's very important to me, uh, is uh, Linux education. I've been doing that for over a decade, putting out educational videos and, and technical how-tos and trying to, like, hey, this is how you do it. If you're looking how to do this, boom, get it done. And one of the latest things I've been working on is OBS Linux Basics and Veritin it wrote in. Because I did the virtual webcam. This is how you set up a virtual webcam. This is how you do it with all these distributions and how easy it can be. He writes in, hey, cheers. Nice to know I was doing it right. Mirrored display foxed me for a bit. And uh, I realized that that's how it comes out the right way in the other end. Yeah, a lot of people didn't realize that. I wanted to make, um, you know, the first time you see a virtual camera and it's flipped on your output. You're like, why is it backwards? And everyone is seeing you correctly. But. Fair to ask, if you could do a quick introduction tutorial into your specialty audio, how can you pipe a third-party player like Sirenscape? Sirenscape? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I think Sirenscape's Sirenscape. probably correct. <laughs> uh, it's, it's like a D&D board game type thing I downloaded. It turns out it's Unity. Jordan and I were debating about that on Saturday. Into OBS, mix it with voice input, pipe it out uh, like a virtual camera to a web session. Is it possible to play around? with the levels in OBS and mix down the music or sound effects without having to go to the external player question mark. Thanks. Yes, it is. But that guide begins with this is how you compile a kernel. Ah, <laughs> uh, Linux users always compiling kernels. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Followed by a spreadsheet of system changes needed for RT audio. Then, then we're going to have to have a chat about learning how to use a DAW and more than likely NetJack for the second computer you're going to need in your setup. Um, yeah, I did mention the second PC. Linux is serviceable for desktop and pro audio, but really, like right now, 100%, there's something I see more and more people running into because we're seeing more and more people get into streaming and they want to do some type of production. They don't want to go this. You know, but they want want a little more than like a Mateus production, of like interface microphone. <laughs> Bare minimum effort. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the Mate Mateus seal of approval, man. Um, and the problem is uh, that just really doesn't exist. We, we got Pulse Audio is really there for your desktop stuff, your basic, you know, hey, I just need to get sound into something and I need to get sound out of it. And that's the end of our relationship. Pulse can pretty much do that. Then you have Jack and that's for, Hey, you need to route 32 channels with what am I at? 8.6 millisecond round trip latency between five computers in real time while running full stack effects and mix minus and all that. It can do it, but there's a lot of setup for it. There's not that happy squishy middle. And that's where pipe wire is going to come in. It's going to give you that prosumer flexibility of that routing of like, I need the desktop audio. But now and then I want to be able to do something like I want to take the Discord audio and mix it where people can hear me. Then with this game audio, then send that back to them, but do a mix minus where they're not hearing themselves back and all the other fun stuff that we do here. It's just not there yet. And um, it will be. Uh, I, I just don't I'm not going to be doing any guides on it for the foreseeable future when it comes to pipe wire just yet, you know. Hey, Red Hat, do you want to cut me a check to build like a pipe wire test box? That could happen. But outside of that, it's just, I had to say that. Like one of the higher ups at Red Hat, like at replied me on um, Twitter. And I'm like, it's not allowed in the studio right now. You know, not broke, don't fix. And uh, I don't have like the spare cash to build another thread boover. So, but pipe wires, pipe wires in good hands. It doesn't necessarily need my help. And, um, uh, just gonna wait on that i will probably definitely do some more stuff on setting up jack but as mr alert has learned there's quite a bit to it and uh um, mm -hmm. like yeah we know <laughs> i've known alan for a long time and me and alan are at the point in this conversation that i've probably had 25 30 times over the years of um you're just gonna have to figure you you, you found a hill to want you want to die on go die on it um yeah <laughs> Come back to me. 
so it, it's always fun. It's good stuff. And, uh, yeah, stay tuned. Uh, and more questions with like OBS stuff too. Um, there's a lot of general stuff that, you know, it's, a uh, apples to apples comparison between windows and Linux, but I'd like to know some of the things cause I don't have any experience with OBS and windows. I don't, I've never seen the program launched on windows as of a screenshot from somebody. So, um, the GUI is the same. It's just if you need to do any backend stuff or any command line stuff, there's uh, replace the mm-hmm. dashes with slashes. See, this is why Pedro doesn't make these videos because one of the first <laughs> videos I'm going to be doing on this is where's game capture? Because Linux doesn't have game capture. And this is a very common question I see. Like, where and this is going to be a short video explaining, you know, why game capture doesn't exist on Linux and why you don't need it. But yeah, little things. Like you don't that. capture the frame buffer directly. You capture the GL context effectively. Yes. <laughs> so beautiful people. We're going to bounce out of here. Thanks for showing up. And, you know, uh, hopefully that's all of wish, uh, whoever stole all Jill's computers, uh, a safe <laughs> yeah. passage. And, <laughs> Don't put them on eBay just yet. Just yet. Yeah, no. Give, give it a few weeks and put them on Craigslist. <laughs> Play it safe, bro. We got to bounce out of here, though. We are running out of time. We will see you next week. Let's roll some Aww. credits. Yay. We love all our beautiful patrons. And thank you, Linux Ganuru, for Pedro's new mic yes. arm. It's awesome. Thank <laughs> you so very much, uh, Mr. Nuru. It is uh, very, very much appreciated. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, uh, I'll keep poking Nori. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would have Then you so will cool. get the brick. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, she can run Brick Simulator instead. <laughs> That's called practice. You know, That's I called actually practice. need to ask her about that game she made. <laughs> I want the Linux version of that. <laughs> oh, Brad, you never let us down. Oh, so we got we got to say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha